Concrete footings are structural elements that support either concrete or steel columns that transfer vertical and horizontal loads and sometimes bending moments as well. But why is it important to know the material of the column and how does that affect the design of the footing itself? This is Javier Encinas and today we're going to discuss the different types of columns found in practice and how they can affect the design of the footing. We will also discuss how all these scenarios can be modeled in as deep foundation. Let's get started. At the left we have a spread footing supporting a concrete column. This is a typical scenario for uh, concrete buildings. In this case the column transfers the loads directly on top of the footing. The vertical load is transferred in bearing and the horizontal load is transferred by shear friction. So some rebars are necessary at the interface between the column and the footing to transfer the load. The dowels are usually hooked at the bottom and straight at the top. The second scenario is a concrete footing supporting a steel column. This is a typical scenario in uh, commercial steel buildings. The vertical load is transferred in bearing through the base plate to the footing and the horizontal load is also transferred to the footing by uh, friction between the base plate and the footing or by the use of the anchor rods embedded in the concrete. The third scenario is a steel column supported on a concrete pedestal which in turn transfers the loads to the concrete footing. This is very common in industrial structures and uh, pie racks or equipment supports. In this case, the column reactions are applied to the top of the pedestal. So in this case, the bearing stresses need to be checked at the bottom of the base plate and also at the bottom of the concrete pedestal. Note that the horizontal load is applied also at the top of the pedestal. So an additional overturning moment is produced by the application of this horizontal load at the top of the pedestal. In addition to the point of application of the column reactions, as I explained, another factor is important to consider in the design of the concrete uh, footings. That's the concept of the effective column. When the column is concrete, the effective column coincides just with the geometry of the, of the column. If the column is square, the effective column just matches the uh, geometry of the square around the column. If the column is round, the effective column is an equivalent square of the same sectional area. On the other hand, for steel columns, the effective column occurs at the uh, average between the base plate dimension and the column dimension. For example, if the column dimension is, say, 6 by 6 inches and the base plate is 12 by 12, so the effective column dimension would be 9 by 9 inches, so the average between 6 and 12. So this dashed line represents the effective column that needs to be considered in the calculations in the, in the software. This is particularly important in the calculation of the punching shear in the footing. This is a quick example to illustrate how to model the different scenarios in ASDIP foundation. This is a spread footing, 12 by 8 by 16 inches thick. Graphically, it looks like that. If we go to the column tab, this is the implementation of the different scenarios that we just discussed. We can specify a concrete column, and in this case, the loads are applied on top of the footing, as shown graphically here. This is a one-way shear calculation and the punching shear calculation. Note that the effective column is shown darker in plan view. This is the bending calculations. And the program also provides the interaction diagram of the concrete column. This is a construction view, a plan view, and an elevation view, showing the dowels in the column. We can also specify a steel column. Note that the column is not on top of a pedestal because this checkbox is not marked. In this case, we need to specify the base plate and also the column and the offset. And the end result is a steel column supported directly on top of the footing with a base plate. We can see here the bearing pressures the one-way shear showing the effective column in this case, the punching shear as well, and the bending calculations. Finally, the construction tab that shows 
plan and elevation view of the design footing. Note that in this case, the program doesn't show the interaction diagram because we don't have a concrete column anymore. Now, if the steel column is on top of a pedestal, we just mark this checkbox and we need to specify the pedestal height. It means that the steel column is on top of the pedestal. If we go to the bearing, we can see the bearing pressures here, the one-way shear, the punching shear, the bending calculations, the interaction diagram for the pedestal, and finally the construction tab with the plan view and elevation view of the pedestal and the footing. As you can see, it's very easy to model in NASDIP foundation either a concrete column or a steel column. And the steel column can be either on top of a pedestal or just directly on top of the footing. And the program considers all the factors that we just discussed for every case. With this, we conclude the presentation of this new feature in NASDIP foundation. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for more videos like this one. Thank you very much for your attention.